Now, another thing that has been hit relentlessly, and doing the news every week, I just realized how much NPM has been targeted. Um, it is such a popular way of installing and keeping things up to date. Uh, and unfortunately, it seems as though this has now been targeted not just by malicious additions to existing packages, but also uh, typo squatting. So, Alice, do you know what typo squatting is? No. It's one of I my favorite things. Favorite. So, the reason that I first found Dougal.com, D O O G L E.com, is because of typo squatting. And of course, they didn't mean to. Dougal.com has been around probably since before Google.com. But I did accidentally go to that website because I made a typo. And people make typos all the time. So it looks like the new hot trend in targeting NPM is actually going after people who make a typo. So the Azure Core Tracing Library for JavaScript is, was one particular uh, target of this. And these all seem to be kind of targeted towards Azure developers um, with specific malicious packages that are typo squatting for existing ones that might be really popular uh, and expect to be used all the time. So this is an interesting supply chain attack because you know, an, an attacker is able to go in, take a look at the most popular packages, and then look at the most popular misspellings of that package and sit on those and make sure that they are the ones who are installing uh, something that has all the functionality of the original package, but some additional backdoors in order to compromise any system that it's run on. So using these public repositories is supposed to be safe because they're supposed to be you know, somewhat vetted, but we've seen lots of issues over you know, the last year or so with malicious commits being done and also with these sorts of attacks going after people that are using, do, I mean, do you remember colors? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. The colors and fakers were also hit. Yeah, yeah. So do you, do you remember what happened with that? Yeah, so I think the developer just got, like, pissed. Mad. Cause... Mad. Yeah. Oop, censored. He got mad because um, various companies were, like, using his source code and he wasn't getting enough, like, attribution for the work he'd done slash not paid for it. Um, so then he just basically deleted this entire, like, open source library that a lot of people were using. I think that was pretty much the gist of it, unless there's yeah. more you have on that. No, no, that was it. So like yeah. at a certain point, like if you were using those, it would automatically get updated and destroy whatever you were using them in. Yeah. Um, so it just, it just messed up a lot of things that were running in production. A lot of people were very upset. This is obviously far more malicious because it's doing all sorts of creepy, creepy things. Like it's exfiltrating the uh, user's uh, the user's username, the user's home directory, the current working directory, the IP address of all network interfaces, IP address of configured DNS servers, and the name of the successful arriving package. Um, so this is just kind of setting things up for a C2 server, um, which mm -hmm. is very scary and sketchy. So um, I don't know what JFrog X-Ray is, but it seems like it deserves its own part. Uh, anyway, uh, so basically this has just been attacked against Azure users who are using NPM, uh, but because that is so popular, um, it's, it's pretty likely that this has impacted a good amount of people who, you know, just made a little typo. So typo squatting is, I still think, super funny because you can use tools like DNS Twist in order to find lots of different currently available websites that are super similar to your target that are only a single character away. And if that's a very common typo, then you could get more traffic than you think. Yeah, last week we also saw this one, which is like another interesting case of protestware where another oh, NPM yeah. package was targeted. Um, what is it called? Node IPC, which is apparently a dependency used by various um, open source um, frameworks like Vue.js. Mm. But someone basically, well, rather the developer of this framework um, poisoned the source code for this um, to download, um, what is this? To download like a political message onto um, Ukrainian and Russian, no, Belarusian and Russian mm. IP addresses. So apparently there were also like some non-governmental organizations that were like based out of Russia and Belarus, American NGOs, um, that were using the software library and they got really, really mad. There you go. Um, <laughs> because they were using the software and all their stuff was destroyed and replaced instead by this um, political message. All right, cool. So that is all the time we have today. I want to give a big shout out and thank you to Veronis for all the help that we've received on production the last week. We got to have Killian come out and do a guest spot on our video that we just released yesterday. So check that out. And it's awesome to be able to do these live streams and communicate with all of you and get to just talk to other hackers throughout the week. So thank you to everybody in the chat. And if you want to ask us a question, make sure to leave it in the uh, YouTube comments so we'll see it. And we will answer it on the live Q&A stream, which will be on Hack5 next Tuesday, which is where we'll see you next. Yep. All right. See you next time. Bye.